What is going on, Laker fans? Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. I uh, want to throw out a video here real quick. Talk about the draft coming up on Thursday. So the Lakers, uh, there's some question marks of whether the Lakers will actually use their picks or if they will decide to trade them. So this video is what the Lakers should do. Should they keep that number 17 pick or trade it? They do have a second rounder as well in the 40s. Um, but that's going to be a predominant conversation. I want to walk through an article um, and uh, you guys can feel free to leave your comments here in regards to whether you think the Lakers should keep the pick, continue to draft. The new CBA is going to change everything. So having um, roster spots that are taking a limited amount on your contract or on your, your total uh, payroll, there are some advantages to that. So we're going to get into all that. Before uh, we do, um, I do want to uh, just uh, continue to let everybody know if you can keep, please subscribe to the channel. be greatly appreciated. And uh, any comments that you have or thoughts that you have, on this specific uh, topic, please uh, feel free to uh, feel free to um, uh, give your comments in the uh, comments below. Okay, so this is what I'd like to do. I'm going to share my screen here with everybody and just go through an article. Clutch Points did something. They do a great job. They throw out a lot of good Lakers content as well. They did something. They took some from Yovan Buha. So I'm just going to walk through some of the stuff Yovan Buha said. If you guys Listen to me or have listened to Lakers talk. I've had Jovan Buha on a tough, um, a ton over the last couple of years. And this is specifically his thoughts, what he thinks the Lakers are going to do. So Lakers increasingly likely to trade first round pick in the 2023 NBA draft. I'm going to come down to the article here. In a mock draft posted on Tuesday, the Athletics plugged in. Lakers beat reporter Jovan Buha wrote that there's an increasing likelihood the Lakers will deal their first rounder. Um, I did mention they got another pick in the 40s. That's number 47. So let me kind of just lay this out here for everybody. Um, Lakers have been exploring trades, number 17 for a while. So it just kind of lists out teams that are out there that have multiple picks that might want to move up. Just as simple as that. Brooklyn may want to move up. Charlotte may want to move up. Um, the Indiana Pacers, I did read something earlier today too, that it looks like Charlotte is, um, leaning, not taking scoop, but taking uh, Brandon Miller with their number two pick. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Sacramento has got some picks. Uh, I'm going to read from this point on here. Los Angeles could strike another deal with the Utah jazz. who have number nine, number 16, number 28 this year. Um, with all the future first that they have as well. All of this, I kind of get the concept. I get the idea. But for me, there's only one thing I truly, genuinely care about with that number 17 pick. And I think this is really important. I'm not saying give up that number 17 pick for nothing. Um, but the way I look at it here for the Lakers is this is kind of what it always comes down for the Lake Show. What it comes down to for the Lake Show is what position are you in right now? And if the Lakers are in a win at all costs right now and, you know, um, do everything you possibly can to win, the only thing that I would say to that, I'll go back to that article in just a second. Um, the only thing I would say to that as far as uh, for the Los Angeles Lakers, what really value does that number 17 pick have this upcoming year? What real value does that number 17 pick have when you're trying to get back to the Western Conference Finals and hopefully beat the Denver Nuggets, which you clearly don't have enough talent to beat the Nuggets, and we see what's going on in the rest of the NBA right now, whether it's the Phoenix Suns that are all in. Don't think the Golden State Warriors are just going to kick back and, and not pay too close attention and do what they feel like they need to do. Um, and there's a lot of other teams. Eastern Conference, I'm sure, is going to be aggressive. Uh, some of these other teams in the Western Conference, it looks like the Clippers – have a potential path to go get Chris Paul, a better path than the Lakers do. So with all that being said, I'm going to go back to the article here for a quick second. With all that being said, it is, in my personal opinion, that the Los Angeles Lakers, no question about it, should be shopping this number 17 pick and going to go get some players that they feel like can help them for this upcoming season. So I'm going to read the rest of the article here. The Lakers could try to package number 17 um, with the 2023-24 uh, salaries of Malik Beasley and or Mo Bamba. 
to nab a win now piece. So a couple of those names in there, Buddy Heald, Dorian Finney-Smith. Um, both of those guys I put on kind of this thumbnail here because those are the two names that uh, sound like could get moved. So let me give you a little bit of an idea here on Buddy Heald. As far as his contract, he's in the final year of his contract. He's owed $18 million, and then he's off the books. Something else about Buddy Heald. He's been associated with the Lakers for quite a bit now. Um, this isn't the first time that we've heard Buddy Hield's name associated with Lakers. It's actually been going on for a couple of years. Man, the Lakers almost traded for Buddy Hield two seasons ago before they got Russell Westbrook. Um, I'm sure many Laker fans wish that would have happened, including the front office, including myself. But Buddy hill has got one more year left on his contract. He's a sharpshooter. That's the best way that I can put it. And you never have enough shooting in the NBA. Malik Beasley certainly wasn't that guy if they thought they were going to get it from him. He did not make that happen. So the Lakers got some contracts where they got some maneuvering here. The other one on this list is Dorian Finney-Smith. Now, Dorian Finney-Smith, you guys remember, played with the Dallas Mavericks, got traded as part of that Kyrie Irving deal to the Brooklyn Nets. He's owed 13 this upcoming year, 14 the year after that, and $15 million in a, uh, in a deal, 2025-2026, uh, that is a player option. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about these two players. Uh, for me personally, personally, Dorian Finney-Smith. Uh, for, first off, let me just say this. Buddy Heald, sharpshooter, sounds good. You can find a way to get him, go make it happen. If I got to pick between these two players, I really, really like Dorian Finney-Smith. I really, really do. And the fact that the man actually plays some defense, the fact that the guy is a... Um, is a, a player that certainly has um, the ability to hit down that wide open, that knock down three pointer, that knock down three pointer. But the three and D guy, one of the things that the Dallas Mavericks certainly missed once they made that trade for Kyrie Irving, they just didn't have that defender, that guy that can just spot up and hit jumpers. The Phoenix Suns, what killed them this past year is they gave up so much depth. Guys like Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder. I know Jay Crowder wasn't playing for them. Um, that they didn't have the the proper 3 and D guys. And even for the Lakers, who made an unbelievable run towards the end of the season, um, having a guy like Dorian Finney-Smith, I think would be uh, a great, great role player to have on your team. So what really, more than anything else, Laker fans, I, I'm again, I'm going to go back to this. I'm not saying just trade the number 17 pick because it doesn't make sense. I'm saying trade the number 17 pick because I'm just don't think there's life after LeBron James will eventually happen. And once that day happens, that everything is going to get figured out from there. But life without LeBron James, I don't think you could be looking at that number 17 pick. If you could go get some real value that can help you this upcoming season, they're kind of in an interesting position where they got Mo Bamba, they got the Malik Beasley contracts where they can match contract offers to go get guys. Um, I'm all about that. There was uh, some chatter about trying to trade for Chris Paul and the Chris Paul, if you can match the contracts for Chris Paul and the $30 million. In my head, I'm like, what the hell are we doing? No, I don't want to do that. This is where I want to match the dollars. This is where I want to go after a player. If Chris Paul wants to come play for the Lakers because he got waived and he's getting the Vets minimum, cool. If not, it's all good. I'd rather Lakers go try to make a move like this and go grab a guy like Dorian Finney-Smith, who I think would be a great fit for the Lakers and would help them next year. And like I said, and I'll say it again, um, the Lakers are currently in a position where it, it's not just about, by no means is this just about the Lakers sitting back and uh, planning for life after LeBron James. Um, you're going to do that once you decide or once LeBron decides that he's going to leave. But at this stage where you know you don't have enough talent right now to run through the West, you got to go get some players and go get some real talent. And I think Dorian Finney-Smith is a fantastic role player. I think Buddy Hield would be a nice fit as well, but between those players, I would prefer Dorian Finney-Smith. Uh, Laker fans, I'll throw this out to you guys. Um, what do you think? You agree? That number 17 pick, I get that that has some value, but um, I I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to wait a couple years for whatever that pick can do. I'd rather... Try to go get a player right now that I think can help the Lakers next year. And specifically, 
try to help the Lakers get back to where they were this past season and see if they could get past a team like the Denver Nuggets. They still got, you know, obviously a ways to go, but they got a, a lot of talent as well. Um, all right, that's all I got for uh, tonight's episode. And Laker fans, I appreciate you guys being a part of the show. As always, as I continue to uh, mention it, if you could uh, subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. And please uh, make sure to give your comments and your thoughts. Thanks, Laker fans.